Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being so patient with this video. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have known that I was waiting for one specific product to arrive. I did say if it didn't arrive in the beginning of January, then I would just do the video, but I am so happy that it has arrived because it makes such a difference that I wanted to share it with you. So I was really fortunate and I attended Ariel's masterclass. Ariel is the Kardashians and a lot of different celebrities makeup artist. He's like their personal one. Um, and I attended his masterclass. It's, I'm gonna be really honest with you and I'll just give you like an honest opinion of like the event side of things. Um, he is obviously an amazing makeup artist and I did pick up quite a lot of tips um, the way he does makeup so I feel like it was a great investment if you're a makeup artist. I think, I think it was around 450 to 650 pound a ticket which is absolutely madness. That is my monthly rent in a ticket. Um, but again, like I said, if you're willing to invest for your makeup artistry, makeup artistry skill, then I totally think it's worth it. I will have to say that, like, one little thing, no, a couple of little things that I would just warn you about if you're thinking about doing it in the future. Um, he actually attended, he actually held the makeup masterclass kind of hungover. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm... You know, I get it, you're from America, you've come to London, like, it's fun, you want to go out, you want to party. I just felt like for people that have paid that much money to attend a masterclass with you and you turn up, like, hungover, not really being yourself, he was very quiet to begin with, which I know it's his first masterclass, and don't get me wrong, like, I get stage fright when I do them, but I just felt like it was, it's a lot of money to be paying someone. I know we got, we know we learnt his techniques, I know that. But I don't know, like at one point he was like, I think I'm gonna pass out. And it's like, oh, like just really, you shouldn't have either one told us that you went out or two, like just have an early night and like get some sleep. You know, people are paying a lot of money. It was literally full, the whole place was full. So it's a lot, that's a lot of money you're earning. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, but no shade. Um, It was just something that I picked up on and just thought, you know, for the future reference, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm just gonna tell you how it is when it comes to those things like that. Also, the company who ran the event, I have to say, it went on for ages. You're paying 650 and we didn't as much as get a bottle of water um, on the seat or anything. It was so hot in that room and we were sat down for four hours, like I wanna say four hours, four and a half hours straight, no break. I had to sneak off of the toilet and get my manager to actually type out some of the things um, because I didn't wanna miss anything. Um, I just felt like, I know, I know celebrity makeup artists that put on events all the time and you've got lunch, you've got drinks, you've got tea, coffee, 650 pound, we got nothing. Like we got a drink at the end of it if you wanted. But it was, yeah, everyone was complaining how hot it was and no one had any drinks. So I feel like from the, the company that was putting on the masterclass, maybe that's something to think about in the future if you're gonna actually put prices up like that high. I know that no one said there was gonna be food, so I, I totally get that. Just be aware that we didn't so much as get like a bottle of water, which is fine, but I wish I would have known and then I would have bought my own. Anyway, saying that, you cannot take away his skill, his knowledge, his makeup artistry. Um, he is like a magician when it comes to makeup. He's very, very clever, very smart. He has a complete, um, I would say, style of makeup that no one else kind of does. So I hope I do it justice. I hope I tell you all the techniques in the right way and I hope you guys can follow along and find it easy to follow along and write notes and pick up products. I'll put all the links to the products in the description box below. Also I will mention some brushes and things like that down below. Just also quickly he did mention that his makeup is photography makeup. It's makeup to look good in photos and on camera. So obviously a load of powder in person you look a bit powdery but on camera and in photos, you're gonna look amazing, and that's his makeup style. So just letting you guys know that I know you're gonna be like, there's so much powder, which there is so much powder. And if you're very dry skinned, you might want to moisturize um, with like a serum as well. So anyway, that's a little bit of a heads up, and yeah. So we have a load of notes to go through. Oh, my manager, isn't Claudia a great manager? Yes, yes, you are Claudia. <laughs> okay, cool, so. Yeah, I feel like let's just jump into it and get started. Right, I feel like you might want to get a notepad and pen to write anything 
um, down because I'm literally going to tell you as I wrote it down at the masterclass. So yeah, so I feel like maybe that's a good idea. Also, it's going to be a long one, so maybe you want to get a cup of tea, some snacks, just to make it feel a little bit more bearable. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, um, so yeah, let's just jump onto this tutorial and I hope you enjoy. Um. Okay, so first things first, uh, model skin was flawless, she had a couple of breakouts, nothing too crazy, probably like the same as mine, um, just like one or two breakouts, which is a massive plus when it comes to makeup, because obviously if you've got great skin, then you're going to have a great base of makeup. Someone asked him in the masterclass, does he ever <laughs> glam anyone with problematic skin, and he was like, yes, before... He obviously did the Kardashians, he did normal clients and stuff, so he said next time he will use a normal person with like a normal problematic skin rather than a model. So we'll see if he actually sticks to that. Um, then I've said he likes a clean face, expensive touch, sexy, gorgeous, fresh and glam. So that was how he describes his makeup and how he wants it to look. And then I said 45 minutes for brows and eyeshadow primer. So I do have to say it was a very long seminar. But yeah, he did take ages to do brows and primer, which is fine because I do. I mean, I don't think I take 45 minutes, but if I have to for this uh, recreation, then I will. <laughs> he analyzes the face, first of all. He says he looks at the client and then he analyzes the brows and see kind of what shape um, he prefers to do on someone. He kind of keeps it kind of natural, so he doesn't do anything too um, out of their natural brow structure, I guess. And then I've said, okay, so sculpted brow. He likes a sculpted brow, and Kylie likes a really sculpted brow. The model had very like fluffy, um, thick eyebrows, so he said he wasn't going to do exactly what he does on Kylie. So he takes Kelly Bakes brow pencil in brown, comb hairs in an upright position, sparse areas first. So he he works on the sparse areas first, which makes sense because say if you were to pencil the whole thing in and or the whole eyebrow is the same shade, these bits will still look darker than this bit. Also, I never do my brows first. I just feel like eyebrows when doing eyebrows once I've got foundation on helps the product stick to my brows that's my personal preference it may not be true I don't know I don't know but we're gonna do everything that he did so this is kind of scary so he brushes brows up I need to pluck my brows so forgive me I'm having a moment the I'm gonna go in with the benefit precisely my brow pencil in the shade three and we'll just hope that that works. <laughs> Put my brows in. So he literally just used such a light hand. And then he brushed as he went to kind of diffuse the product. Three hours later. I don't know if I like them. I always feel like when you do brows first that like you just look really weird. Anyway, we'll move on for a bit and see if it gets any better. <laughs> RCMA foundation palette, I think it's Chantal? Shinto, that's it, Shinto. In the seminar it's like Chantal, but it's Shinto. Um, this took a while to come because I had to get it from America. No one else had this palette everything else was just like uh it was like rcma palette but a different palette name so anyway got this and then it says um foundation palette chantel 2 so i'm guessing this carve out brows lightly only a little product chantel 2 and one up oh, mixed together for brows underneath using a flat concealer brush i remember he used almost a fluffy brush for the top bit of the brows it wasn't like I don't think he likes the top bit to be too sharp Shinto too a little bit he always like pops a bit on the back of his hand really um. I 
feel like I look a bit glazy. It all came together though, so I guess I just have to believe in the process. <gasps> I haven't done moisturiser. Damn. Okay, so the moisturiser was supposed to be before brows, but we'll just do it now and I'll just go a little bit on my head. He said he uses Lemur. Obviously, not everyone's got a Kardashian bank account, unfortunately. So he said the next best thing is Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, I'm just going to rub a bit. He likes to really moisturise. She had, um, that you could see underneath the lights, like her skin was very glowy and hydrated. He doesn't believe in primers. He just believes in a really good moisturiser. He didn't say anything about eye cream. Um... So I'm just going to put some moisturiser underneath the eyes. I'm sure he does use eye cream though. But he didn't say anything else apart from... He mentioned a mer and Kiehl's. But now we'll use a concealer brush. And, and we will mix one and two from the palette. Which is this shade and that shade. Pot, pop it on the back of our hand and we'll carve underneath the brow. Okay, now what? So then he uses a Morphe G24 brush to buff concealer that's applied on the brow bone. Let's just use this brush because I don't have a Morphe one. And he blends that all in. Take some more of that foundation, so I'm guessing the shade one and two mix, and apply it onto the eyelid. He didn't use eyeshadow primers and he didn't mention eyeshadow primers, so. And then he used the Laura Mercier translucent powder just to set that foundation in place. And then he went on to use brow gel on the brows. He uses my favorite brow gel, which is the Benefit 24 hour brow gel. I didn't even know this, like, uh, I should have realized that. But you know the flat side to this? That's the suspenser. Suspenser? Dispenser? I always say the wrong thing. I think it's dispenser. Yeah, he said suspense, but whatever. Um, it basically pops the product onto the brow. And then you use the brush to brush it. Because he was like, if you just use the brush, then it doesn't put enough on. So you need to use the flat side to apply enough brow gel. Eyes before skin, he doesn't do anything really precise, he likes fluffy brushes and he just um, likes it to be super like smoked out. I'm going to use my big fluffy brush and he actually uses this palette later on so I feel like I may as well just use this now. Um, this is the Desi and Katie Friendcation palette. I'm going to take that middle top shade which is necessary and I'm going to use that as my transition shade on this big fluffy brush again he's not precise so he literally was just swirling it around and he really likes it to go into the inner corner and then he fed it like through this part of the brow he said that it cinches the center of the face in and it looks good on camera Remember that all of his makeup, and he like kept repeating it, that all of his makeup is for camera purposes. Um, it's what will look best when the flash goes off, you know. He just like really smoked it out. Even like on the sides and stuff. It was just a bit like messy. I guess it's... The one thing about his eyeshadow, I literally felt like you could learn it from like a... Watching YouTube tutorials. So yeah, he just like kept blending really. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep on blending and hopefully I will turn into a Kardashian. 
And then I'm going to dip into the shade Churro. And I'm going to use this on the outer corner. He also, um, this is kind of what I do really, but he brought it on the lash line. So you make like a V shape up into the transition shade. It like, he said it opens up the eyes and just makes them look really pretty. So he like pops it along here and then he'll blend it out in a minute. I mean, I spoke as though he would blend this out, but I mean like he blended it out in a minute, which, so I'm going to blend it out in a minute. <laughs> And then just using the first brush just to diffuse it a bit more. He gets a makeup wipe. I like simple ones, so I'm just going to use this. And he draws a straight line and cleans up anything underneath the eye. He said he um, goes from the outer corner of the eye out towards the temple, and that's how he gets his straight lines. So... Out towards the temple. I feel like that one's nice and that one's gone a bit wrong, but whatever. Then he uses a clean, fluffy brush. I'm just going to take this Dose of Colours one and he just like blends out this line so it's not so harsh. He then goes straight in with the foundation and a clean beauty blender. I'm actually going to use my Real Technique sponge and I've got a beauty blender here in a minute for something else. So he uses Armani Luminous Silk which is my favourite foundation. He uses the shade 6.5. My personal preference I prefer 6 but he likes pinky undertoned things which actually really surprised me because I didn't think um, many people did like pinky undertoned but he uses... Um, like he loves pink kind of essence with everything he does um, you'll see when I get on to other things as well but yeah so he uses 6.5 I'm just gonna use 6 he literally used the tiniest amount I want to say he only used like one pump but I'm gonna use two because I feel like I like full coverage he then uses a foundation brush to apply it to the center of the face equally um, and then he blends it out in a minute Well, he blends it out with a sponge He doesn't put too much on the forehead. I'm just going to start blending That out To be fair, I've still got that much left so maybe I did only need to use one pump so then I'm going to go in with my damp Real Technique sponge and I'm going to press this in and blend it out. He said he uses quite a lot of pressure and he blends for ages and he did. I want to say like he blended for like maybe 20 minutes. Like I'm not even joking. He said he really likes the foundation to really be pressed into the skin because of him using loads of powders and stuff. He said the model should have had a headache from the pressure and the amount he was blending. So, I'll wait until I have a headache. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm getting bored now, but he was still pressing. And then what he did was take like, I wanna say maybe two and three, remember two and three together, onto his sponge. He popped a bit onto his hand and then blended that in too on top. Only a little bit though, like hardly anything. Keep on blending. I mean it does, it, it now looks like my skin. Like it doesn't really look like I've got foundation on. So I feel like I've had enough now. <laughs> I'm finished. Also with foundation, he likes to go 1 to 1.5 shades darker than your actual skin tone. Um, because he says the when the flash and stuff goes off and like photos are taken, you will look a little bit paler on the face and stuff. Um, so he likes to do that. Also he did bring the foundation a little bit onto the neck. And I did ask him a question which he didn't really answer, which is fine. But um... 
I asked when you put foundation on the neck, how do you stop it from transferring onto clothes? And he just replied saying he, they've got a team to deal with things like that. So I was like, okay. Um, but he did say he powders, so maybe that helps. Cause I don't really powder my neck, to be honest. Like the foundation goes on and I don't really powder. So I'm going to try that in a minute. And then also he said he doesn't put too much foundation on the forehead because Kylie once said to him that the forehead is the first thing um, that you can notice when you've got loads of makeup on because if you, you know, use your facial expressions you get lines and it creases and the foundation will sit in those lines. So he literally uses, and like I did, a tiny, tiny amount of foundation on the forehead. Um, so yeah, she doesn't get that you've got loads of makeup on because of the forehead creasing. He also uses this foundation for everyone, whether you're oily or dry. He prefers this for dry skin, but he says you will be, from the amount of powder that he uses, he said you will be totally, like it's wearproof whether you're oily or dry. He said it won't budge all day. So he uses a small flat concealer brush with the RCMA foundation too on the areas where the spots are. So that is what we're going to do. Oh, that's it. He does um, cream contour first and then he likes to highlight because he feels like he can really um, pinpoint where he wants to highlight. Whereas if you do con contour after, it kind of gets rid of the highlighted area But and he's all for the highlight thing. Okay, he also said he doesn't, I don't think he uses corrector, but if he does, he uses the Armani um, peach corrector. But I have the Becca Cosmetics one. He mentioned that Armani is the only one that you don't have to let sit um, and dry off. Otherwise, if you're using another corrector, you more than likely need to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to pop it on underneath my eyes now. Once we've done the contour, it should be dry. So I need to try out the Armani one. But he doesn't use correctors really because the concealer, I don't have that shade, so I'm gonna have to use a corrector. He uses the two darker shades in this palette and he mixes them together on a very fluffy brush that kind of looks like this. It was quite flimsy and it wasn't very um, dense or anything. Morphe brush G40, I don't have, but it says push into hairline and softly blend, blend the brush into the hairline first and then you start to bring it down. So really start high up and then start to bring it down. And you literally couldn't tell that he was putting on like hardly anything until like after a while of blending, you could see the color like really come through. He makes a half circle as well on the head. Like he joins it to the brow and it goes like that. And then bring it down by the brows. into the hairline and then bring it down <laughs> I love how I'm like la 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 in my own little world talking to myself it's very subtle but it's very effective like can you see that already like it's very subtle he also said he doesn't like drawing lines on the face because with photog like photos and clients having loads of photos is if he didn't blend out a line properly you'll be able to pick that up in an instant when it comes to photos so he just does it this way because it saves him time like blending um, loads out and stuff so I feel like that's enough for now for the forehead I feel like that's made a really nice effect and I am going to be using this in my daily there's some like things I just think are just a waste of time for me but other things I really like to do. Contour under cheeks doesn't take cream contour onto neck. Okay. Oh, I'm, I think I've applied a bit too much. I'll wipe down my arm. Like you can never see the loads when he's doing it. Oh, can you hear my tummy? Oh. <laughs> So hungry. Might have to go get a snack in a minute. Snack in a cup of tea. So you're just gonna keep on 
keep on blending like my arm actually feels like it's broken I feel like this type of makeup like you should only really do it when you're getting photographed for an event like I wouldn't sit here every day and do this to my face like no one's got time for that but you know wedding makeup going to a charity ball going on a night out and you want to take extra time and care of your makeup going on date night and you haven't been for like a month you know that type of thing I wouldn't do this every day I can't believe they do do it every day oh he what did he do? I don't think he put it on his chin on his chin or her chin he uses the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, but he uses the shades Ginger and Honey, which I don't have. I just have Custard and Marin Glace. Was that it? Marin Glace? So I'm just going to mix these two together, because that's what I have. And he likes the shades to be a skin tone colour rather than lighter, because he said you get like the lighter effect when you come to... Um, do all the powdering and stuff. The honey shade that he uses has a pinky undertone to correct um, and then he's using a flat concealer brush same as the brows lightly make a line under the eye shape to clean it up so underneath here to clean it up. I think I took a sneaky photo I don't think we were like we weren't allowed to take photos not that I don't think we weren't allowed to take photos but I did take a sneaky sneaky photo because I wanted to know exactly where the placement was a line there we're going to take this underneath the eye he then took it down the nose not all the way though brought it back into the eye and then only placed it on half of the inner corner of the eye he didn't drag anything else out there super random he uses the brush from the urban decay naked two and naked palettes i think these come in all of it he uses this fluffy side to blend out so that's what we'll do he then put a little bit on the chin he doesn't put anything on the lip he just drags whatever's down there onto the lip and then down the center of the nose He did like the thinnest line ever. So then he uses this brush to blend it in. Very random, I thought. Then I'm just going to use my sponge to buff it in. I can't remember if he did or not. I didn't write it down, so I'm not sure. Then he just went over the contour just slightly just to blend it into each other so it wasn't just to like make it look seamless I guess. They are so different I can't even get over it. One goes up one goes straight. <sighs> that one's good. Let's just focus on this side of the face okay. <laughs> okay then he uses the Tom Ford shade Illuminate number one. Put it on the back of the hand and use it to contour the nose. Doesn't like it to be crazy. Um, I do not have that. I'm just going to have to use this contour. So we'll just use number five. We'll just do a little bit. And we'll just contour it down. I'm using the Morphe E13 brush. He literally took it like a little bit down and then underneath the tip as well. It's literally all he did. He likes a beigey pinky powder to use. I guess. It makes sense because if you are to do flash photography, it will probably have a bit of colour in it. It won't be stark white. He really likes the Ben Nye Fair Translucent Powder. So he said it's thicker than the Laura Mercier, um, which is why he likes it. So I said bake the centre of the chin using a shitty old triangle sponge in a soft triangle on the chin. So he did this. Where's my shitty triangle sponge? It's kind of dirty now because I have used it. I'm just going to use this and what he did was like 
bake it in like a triangle. You made it look easier though. It's not really going to plan, but you know, get the gist. Beauty blender. He used the pointy side into the powder. He then tapped most of the powder off onto his hand and then pressed it into the skin under the eye. And he did this because he likes to set the foundation first before he goes and concealer before he goes in and bakes with a lot of powder. Because he said otherwise that's when it's going to look cakey because it's going to stick to the wet part of the face. And that totally makes sense. Over the nose a little bit as well, first of all. A little bit on the forehead. And a little bit on the lip here. Now it's for the baking time. He then popped on about this amount. And then he baked a little bit in the center of the forehead. So then he took the triangle and the pointy side and made a line down the nose. It was straighter than this. <sighs> okay, so this was absolutely hilarious. So he used a massive, gigantic powder puff um, to apply powder to the rest of the face. So I went online and I typed in, I've got hair and it's really annoying me. That is not what I typed, but I need to get rid of it because it's going to actually really annoy me. Um, I typed in a large powder puff and I ordered it because it said it was a large one and it came and it looked like this. How is that large? Someone please tell me why you wrote that on the description. It's from Paul and Joe and it's really fluffy and I would really like it if it was large, but it's not. So anyway, we're gonna have to use a tiny little one. So it says, take a big powder puff using a Kylie powder, losing a powder. Um, I think it's a Kylie powder. I'm not too sure. He said he wasn't allowed to tell us yet. Um, I feel like it would be. Or he said, cover effects medium tan powder to press into the skin, not going over the baking. Um, I went online and found cover effects matte setting powder. Um, this was in medium. There was a tan one, so I'm guessing it is this one. So I'm going to use this. What he did was he popped it onto like one half of the puff, he rubbed it in together. So I'm really trying with this tiny little puff. And then he just like patted it in to the rest of the skin and just like went around the baking. Oh, a bit too much. Then he went in with Laura Mercier powder with the triangle and he drew a line from the ear down to the outer corner of the mouth. Outer corner of the mouth. So this is what you end up looking like. Going back into the eyes, so he went on top and he was just like buffing it again. Um, then a flat shader brush under the eye for eyeshadow, so something like this. He took the shade um, necessary again underneath the eye. He took it all the way to the inner corner and then showed us a trick later on to clean it up if it goes a bit messy. I never, I've never thought about using a flat shader brush for underneath the eye, but it does make sense because it doesn't get too crazy and smoked out, but it still does the same thing as like a blending brush. And he joins that up to there. So then he took a small pencil brush like this. This one is the Sigma L04 brush and he used churro 
and he just lined like the upper lash line with this. Then he took off the chin powder so it didn't get too heavy. So for his bronzer now, he will go on and bronze. Um, he uses Emon Cosmetics Clay 5. He uses this to diffuse underneath the eyeshadow so it, like, it looks all in one. He said it's a really good bronzer so I mean if I ever make a trip to America or someone else does, they can get me one. <laughs> um, I'll go online and see if I can find it but... I just thought I would use my Inglot bronzer for now. And then he went in with his bronzer. I can't remember what brush he was using, but I really like, he, it, was, it wasn't a very fluffy brush because he was very, really precise. So I'm just going to use this. And he went over the forehead again a little bit. And the cheekbones. And then he used this underneath the chin and then he went like this on the back bit by the ear. I think it really like pops out the jaw. So then it said, use a clean eye brush to get rid of powder on side of nose, um, side by side motion. He used a Royal, Royal something BOM44 large crease brush. And he just used side to side motions. And he like really made sure it was like, buffed away I right, brush off powder under cheek so maybe we keep the nose for the minute Okay, so he cleans up the eyes by using a flat eyeshadow brush. Uh, he uses Sigma E61 using a Laura Mercier M7 pressed and W25 sheer press powder. He uses it underneath the eye to add coverage and clean up and take it down the size of the nodes also. I don't have the Laura Mercier one, but I do have Charlotte Tilbury. I have a light one. I think that might be too light. I have a medium one. I think I'm just gonna mix the medium one and light together. And he just like, pressed it in, took it down the sides of the nose, and then like cleaned up any eyeshadow that had like come down a little bit too much. He didn't do it for too long either, like it was just like a very little, quick little touch. Um, and then wipe off the rest of the baking powder. Dust the nose down, it says set the nose again with the puff and powder. So I guess you're just pressing in. Then he used a fluffy brush with Hula Bronzer. This is the Morphe E13 brush. And then he just applies a little bit over. He actually doesn't highlight the nose, which I thought was very um, strange. I thought he was going to, but he doesn't. He says, he just leaves the the baking to do like the natural highlight of the nose so yes okay so then it says take Kylie blush 
Bl uh, blush brush 3 wet and wild pretty peach pink and x rated from kylie and applied to the apples of the cheek uses a really really light hand and slight slightly takes it on the concealer and run it through at the top of the nose a little on the chin and forehead to tie it all in so that's where he likes the pink tones to come in from i don't have those shades or the wet and wild one or anything like that but i do have um a peachy pink blusher he applied loads and then he like wiped it on his arm and then he like applies it in the middle bit here and he takes it like up onto the concealer in just that area there and then did the same on the other side blush is the first thing to fade so he that's what he said so he said he puts oh shit so he puts um, quite a lot of it on because it's the first thing that fades, which is 100% true. Because I used to put quite a lot on for my brides and at first they'd be like, oh my gosh, but then literally within an hour it had died down. So, and then he popped it through the bronzer. He put a little bit on the chin and then like, on the end of the nose morphe a sweet tea lip liner i we actually got this in a goodie the goodie bag that he gave us and it's beautiful i will be repurchasing this um liner it looks a bit cray cray at first because it is quite dark but he blends it out and i'll blend it out in a minute so he lets Kylie do her lips because she's very i think she's very particular but he says that he likes to do the cupid bow um, as close together as possible, like until it looks before it looks a bit weird, you know. He doesn't like to do the cubic bow like all the way over here. So we'll do this. And then he blended in the edges. And he used his finger, or I can't remember if he used his finger or a brush, but he blended it in. So I'm gonna use a brush because I've got nails on and it will totally ruin this makeup. It did start to look a bit weird and I was like, oh no, I don't know if I like that, but it did look really nice once he blended it out and then added a shade. He used a lipstick shade from the Kim, I think it's the Kim palette. He used, oh no wait, lied. We are cleaning up now. We are cleaning up the edges. So I'm just gonna take my concealer brush and what's ever left over. And he cleans up the edges. That's mostly the bottom. I don't think he really needed to clean up the top. He used the classic iconic uh, Kim Kardashian West Bible Palette Pink Rose Colour. Um, number two nude lipstick from the KKW, uh, right in the center of the lips with a small flat brush. And super nude lip gloss from the Kim and Mario collab in the very center. Like the lips looking looking okay using mac fix plus he mixes the tatcha luminous mist in it so this is the skewy luminous dewy skin mist and then he pops a little bit of this in with mac fix plus so i'm just going to take my lid off i really need to get a new one of fix plus he shuts some few things down some room okay uh we'll just pour a little bit and he didn't really i can't how do you even open it just makes it a little bit more cloudy a little bit more luminous we need to use this in a minute so i'll leave this out um and then i think he what did he do with this using oh he just did it around the face but he didn't do it on the eyes so we'll just cover the eyes um wanted uh, most of it on the 
cheeks because now when we go in with um, highlighter, I'm going to use the Pixie by Petra Highlighting Duo. Um, he used the Charlotte Tilbury 3 Block Highlighter. He just starts to work it into the cheeks. He said, the more you blend in the highlighter, the beautiful, the more beautiful it looks. So he did blend this in for a while. And then he applied a little bit above the brow here. Right, and then he curls lashes. So he made the model curl her own lashes. He likes them to be super, super curly so and he like really looked at them so if one was curlier than the other like he'd make her do it again so I feel like this is very important and he made sure that she got like the outer corner lashes oh my god my stomach <laughs> I really need to eat I just don't want to ruin my lipstick now and I've got to take a selfie so okay I feel like that'll do he used a Ciroc lash curler uh, over curl lashes when you apply mascara it'll drop and then it'll keep lifted he uses Lancome Noir black mascara he also mentioned just then he uses the iPhone with the light with the makeup it's called the makeup light online and that's what he uses for lighting and then he takes his photos with the Sony F6 but he doesn't really like it anymore so I'm going to just use my iconic London mascara because I don't have the Lancome one and he like placed his which is what I used to do I'll show you on the next eye just in case you're a makeup artist and you didn't know this trick. I used to do it all the time. So I used to put my thumb, I can't really do it, but that used to be my thumb. And I used to then apply mascara like that with my thumb being there. Because it was the guard, so if I got any mascara like off the lash, it wouldn't go onto the eyelid. And it would just go onto my thumb instead. So he uses, or he used, the Ardell 814 Faux Mink Lashes. Uh, he cut the front of the lash off, so it's a corner lash, um, which is, um, it makes sense, because he wants it. He literally put it from about here over. He didn't put it in the inner corner part. He didn't put any eyeliner on on the eyelid, and I, I struggle so much when I'm putting lashes on without any eyeliner so this is going to be fun very fun I love a cookie matches my makeup too okay so I'm going to wait until they dry and then I'll show you the tool that I have been waiting for to arrive to actually um, show you how much of a difference it makes I didn't want to do this video without it because it was the one thing I was like whoa so I'll put on some bottom mascara. He likes to do more on the outer corner. And then just a little bit to coat the inner corner part. Okay, so I'll talk to you about this product. And then once this eyelash glue is dry, we can use it. So, this is a mini eyelash curler. It's a Japanese mini eyelash curler and it's B dot B E L uh Prima or Primer Curl Up Mini Lash Curler. This is what took like a month to arrive to arrive. I bought it from Amazon. I'll leave it linked down below. Oh it comes with a couple of extra things which is cool. So he uses this to curl the lashes once he's got lashes on um and it made such a difference that I was like this is what I need in my life so I'm going to just give it he says it presses your natural lashes together with the false ones like look at that difference 
Like you can see a little bit of skin here, but we'll go in with that. This is the next step we need to do. But how mad is that? How open do my eyes look? This eye look compared to this eye. Like this looks super dark at the base where the lashes are like now joint to my falsy ones. The la lashes on the ends are like really flared up, whereas these are like still like meh. Like how much of a difference does that make to your eyeball? He says he also uses um, like single lashes as well, but he didn't um, show us anything. So I'm just taking a little bit of caramel pomade from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm just going to pop this on my waterline. He says he likes to use um, pomades rather than liners because they are waterproof and then once they dry they won't like transfer down to the bottom lash line. So then all he did next is just take some of the luminous dewy skin mist, he covered the eyes again and he just sprayed this around the face. And then that's it. Alright guys, that's it for this makeup tutorial. I hope you did enjoy and learnt some new techniques. I'm actually really happy with the way that it came out. The eyeshadow lines are something I need to work on. Obviously, I don't know why I haven't been able to do it today. But um, yeah, all in all, I think I've done the makeup look justice and I will do a flash test now and put it on the screen for you and then a non-flash test as well so you guys can see. So I'm going to go and take some selfies and actually eat some food. My stomach is about to eat itself. So anyway, I'll catch you in my next video and until then, see you later. Bye bye now.